Maps is one of the best features of Micro Studio. It lets you make a large, beautiful looking level uh, by reusing all of these little tiles like this. You can do it for platformer games, you can do it for top-down games. Uh, the camera video, the camera game element is a really good example of a nice top-down one. Um, so let's look at how to use this. The first thing that you need to do if you're doing a map is you'll need to get a tile sheet. Um, and again, you can get this if you go to the website, uh, the course website, there is a nice page on how to get um, game assets and you can simply drag them and drop them in here and you'll probably end up with uh, one like this. Usually uh, pixel art ones will be, each tile will be 16 by 16 pixels, but more detailed ones might be 32 by 32. <clears throat> so then once you've imported your tile sheet here, if you go to uh, the map editor, you can add a new map here and I've added level one. Uh, now the map size here is how many uh, of these blocks wide it is and times how many blocks it is high. Um, the block size here, 16 by 16, um, you'll know if you've got that right if you go over and click on your tile sheet. Uh, if each block it has a square around it, you'll know that it's right. But like I said, it's usually 16 times 16 or 32 by 32. Um, then what you can do is you can um, simply click on uh, one of these, the uh, snowman for example, uh, and come over here and place it onto the uh, the map over here. Although a snowman on the beach doesn't really make sense, so I can right click in that case to get rid of it. Uh, you can also uh, select multiple tiles at a time. So for example, I might select all three here and then I can come over and place the tree like that. And I can also uh, use right click to get rid of that as well. The next thing to do is to know how to draw the map. Um, now, the one thing I really suggest you do is you work out yourself how many pixels wide and high your entire map is. Uh, so this one, for example, is 23 blocks of 16, so 23 times 16 wide. Uh, and if I put that in my calculator, 23 times 16, I get 368. Um, and so if you then go into the code, uh, you'll notice that I have drawn it, screen.drawmap, and I put the name, zero, zero is just the middle position, and 368 pixels wide. And also calculate how tall uh, it is as well. Um, you don't have to actually draw the map the actual size. You can squish it, make it smaller or bigger or whatever. Um, however, uh, it really helps for a lot of things if you can draw it the actual size. So unless it looks ridiculous, I suggest you draw it uh, actual size onto the screen. Uh, just a quick reminder, if you are adding a camera, uh, if you won't draw it at zero, zero, you'll draw it at negative camera dot X and negative camera dot Y, but that's for another video. So that's the basic idea uh, with maps. You can spend a lot of time uh, building lovely levels. Uh, it does get a little bit hard uh, if you have really big levels to try and see the screen properly, everything gets really squished. Uh, so on the large computer monitors at school is probably the best. Um, that's the main part of the video. I just want to also briefly talk about co collision detection on maps. Uh, now this is really an, a bit of an advanced thing uh, if you do the platforming one, for example. Uh, so I'm not going to show you completely how to do it. I just want to put in the back of your mind uh, that you can program your game so that uh, it automatically detects when you're colliding um, with a, a map here. Um, there are several ways of doing that, um, and other that's for other videos, maybe the platforming section, but I just wanted to talk about uh, what to do if you want uh, the character, for example, the player, to collect, to connect and collide with these ground tiles but you don't want to collide with trees. So you might have noticed in my game before, um, if I go back here, I can actually run past trees, they're just decoration. Uh, and, uh, but if I run into, into something like this, then I, it doesn't count. Um, so how do you do that? Well, there are two basic ways and 
it will really depend on your game which way you do. The way I've done this game is um, I've actually used this map here on the right for all of the trees and everything, but I've actually copied the sprite and I have another version of the sprite that's actually called ground. And uh, I've made sure that I've used this version of the sprite called ground uh, for making anything that I want collision detection with. And then later on in my code, um, I don't know if I can find exactly where it is. Um, I'll have a bit of a search. Oops. Yes, you'll see here that um, I've actually said if the sprite starts with the word ground, uh, then there's going to be collision detection. Another option that you can do, and I might just hop out of, of this game, um, is if we go to the camera, this map, you'll see that I actually have a map that's just the background here. And then I have another map uh, that's actually things here that you might be able to collide with. Um, this was actually unavoidable because uh, if I put any of these things um, actually on the map itself, let me make this a bit bigger. Um, if I put any of these things on the map itself, you'll notice that it actually um, gets rid of the background. So I had to actually um, put on the uh, two separate maps for this. It was quite hard, hard lining things up. I had to sort of go back and forth between them a fair bit to make sure that I was lining them up correctly. Uh, but you may be forced either for collision or just being able to simply draw your map, you may be forced to actually have two maps. Uh, and then in the code, uh, you may be forced to then draw them both. Uh, you'll see that we draw the world map and then the objects map on top. Uh, anyway, those are just some thoughts. If you are doing collision detection, I'm guessing you're probably going to be coming grabbing some help from me anyway. Uh, so that's just an introduction.